Told me what I'm signing. We're in tune with you. Give us a call. Jim's coins in Hilda. 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 
Madison. actually live right now we are uh, yes it's the show where we watch all of our vhs tapes we have about eleven thousand seven hundred and fifty of them right now we're trying to get through all of them i'm joe over there steve there's nick there's george and uh boy we got a good show today i have three new corners i'm introducing tonight three new corners buckle up wow. okay yeah. uh well let's dive right into things though uh, with a found footage festival classic. Or wait, do you want to show off some uh, new finds? From I the do office? because yeah, last weekend Nick, we uh, so we people send us a lot of videos that the collection just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and uh, we we did an unboxing and we did like four episodes. We pre taped four episodes. We're going to air them in the next four weeks. And uh, but man, it's just here's the thing: the Melindas know what we like now. They yes, don't. They do. we, we don't get the bullshit in the mail anymore. We get the good stuff in the mail now. So no more for, buttercream gang. No, uh, none of the the easy finds that you normally find in a thrift store. No more feature films for families. We're talking some deep cuts. Stuff. We're talking stuff like look at the scimitar. Here's a scimitar. I didn't even know this one existed. Called World War Three. World War Three hasn't even happened yet. That's how uh, far ahead of their ahead time ahead of the scimitar times. is. Yes, yep. exactly. We got one called World War Three. Oh, look at that. I want to show this. I don't want to do any. I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm spoiling for these unboxings, but Judah sent this. And Nick, you had showed this before, like in, in a right, like a, a, a picture a, a during picture the contest. We had to decorate cans of uh, the, the caps from Pam cooking spray. Yep. So this is a Pam cap dressed as P Pavel Goberman for the new viewers. I'm, I'm sure this is self-explanatory. <laughs> yep, no explanation needed. But yep. Joe, you pointed out that he recreated the uh, exact tapestry that's behind yep. this uh, Russian American exercise guru in the tape uh, in this little diorama. Yep, he gave the the Pam Cap uh, hair too and shoes. <laughs> you see the shoes down yeah. there? See the, the shoes. shoes and then the Pavel government thing. Yeah, the tapestry is all accurate. I want to show George one thing. We we opened this up too. Somebody got you a present, George. Oh, Danielle. Thank you. Said uh, from one from a fellow cemetery creep to another, uh, she got you this book on cemetery Ooh. iconography or something. Oh, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'm eager have... to decode what the different stone formations mean, and that's the book for me. There you go. Thank yeah. you. It'll be here at the office, so swing by, pick it up. I just want to uh, show one thing. I mean, we unboxed a lot. I don't want to spoil too much, but this is a fairly nondescript tape that doesn't really open anywhere. This is what it says on the outside. The Jason Hervey Video Fan Club. So you remember the older brother from the Wonder Years, Jason Hervey. <laughs> yes. This is exactly what it sounds like. I want to point out that he's wearing a, a Run DMC uh, jumpsuit in here, and he is talking to the audience, and he's doing skateboarding tricks and rapping. It is uh, incredible. It's right up there with the Corey Haim, Me, Myself, and I video, and nobody has seen this. So yeah, I Bob can't Hedges. Bob Hedges yeah. sent us that one. We we need to get more of uh, fan club fan videos. Club. Yeah. 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 I think we just have Corey Haim and now we have Jason Hervey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I Run did like Dixon. Jason Hervey. I yeah. He was a great the... from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Uh, I, I recognize him more as like uh, Wonder Years. Uh, well, yeah. Wayne, Wayne from Wonder Years. Like yeah. that's he'll always be Wayne for me. Yeah. Steve, what were we saying? Three? Uh, someone, someone in the chat was hold up three to prove that it's a live show. There's a number of different people <laughs> who wanted to insult their mother. There's a lot going on in the chat already. There's, that's smart. People that's a good move. Quit. There's a little yeah. tip. If it says Zoom in the corner, that means we're live. And also, if you see that pre-roll of stuff that plays beforehand. 
Um, this is our St. Patrick's uh, Week episode, so uh, let's get into an Irish uh, related found footage festival classic, shall we? Okay, yeah, and I didn't do the uh, found footage festival classic graphics, so pretend that's here. Okay. Um, all right, this comes from where is it? I have the tape somewhere around here. Oh, this is uh, Frank Worley. This is a tradition here. Uh, the uh, St. Patrick's Day tradition. We always play when Irish eyes are smiling because this might be his best song. We have like, I don't know. What do we have? Like a dozen of these tapes. We spent $160 yeah. for all these tapes this is the most we ever spent for a collection of VHS tapes. And, uh, but I think his best one is when Irish eyes are smi- smiling and it we watch this everything. once a year. Yeah. It's got the green screen effects in it. It's got some misspellings and the lyrics to these sing-along songs that were made for nursing homes. Yeah, here it is. Uh, take it away, Frank. Sing along with us, because we're live. When I when Hirsch, Hirsch, I start smiling, sure it's like the morning in spring. In the, in the lit of Irish laughter, they spelled Hirsch wrong. You can hear the angles. When Irish are happy. Are happy. I think that's I think that's um what's the the guy who created this uh, Bill Porter Bill Bill Porter's dad because he plays Santa in Christie yep the, it's definitely yeah. him yep the world seems bright and gay and when, when Irish, Irish eyes are smiling sure steal your heart away they, this, this is what is, makes it. Exactly. Giant boat stools. I don't know how they got him on there. And when Irish eyes are so tell, tell me if you think the uh, the physics is correct on this. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and say yes, but I'll, I'll withhold my judgment until I see it. <laughs> All right, tell me if the, if the physics is, is correct here. All right. Eyes are smiling, sure steal your heart <laughs> yep, that's how gravity works. Yep. Just glad he landed okay. Yeah, he's fine. Oh, there's some clovers down there. Can you have him dance with the uh, Ultimate Packer fan? Oh, you know what? I I watched this today, and I was like, I wonder if we we took inspiration from this for the pa- Packer fan. Although the Packer mm-hmm. fan, I think we made like 15 years prior to this. But I'm gonna get, I'm gonna say no then. Maybe they took inspiration from the Packer fan. They might have. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 Um, well, all happy right. St. Patrick's Day on Friday. I hope you all watch that. But there's also uh, another important holiday, which is today, live as we're doing this, is the 15th anniversary of the premiere of our documentary, Dirty Country, which is not about a found video, but about a cassette we found on a road trip while in high school called uh, Songs for Studs by a guy named Larry Pierce. These were dirty, filthy, raunchy, original country songs that uh, we accompanied us on every road trip we had for a decade. And then we finally tracked the guy down. We made a feature length movie about it. It premiered at South by Southwest today, 15 years ago. Yeah, it's uh, here. It does dirty country. It's available on store.foundfootagefest.com. And uh, I'm proud of it. I'm really proud of it. We spent like four and a half years following this uh, dirty country music singer along. He was a uh, factory worker by day. Actually, I think he worked the third shift. And yeah. he, he wrote these dirty songs on his lunch breaks. Then he came home and recorded them in his garage. We're going to end the show with a Larry Pierce music video that we cut together. Um, so, uh, yeah, but pick this up. 15 years. Still proud of this. Uh, filthy, filthy music music uh, by a wonderful dude. You can so. watch it tonight. Digital download. It'd be good to watch on the anniversary. Um, the other hey, thing. Oh, go ahead. Oh, the other we thing I want to mention. Yeah, just briefly is that. Um, so this week, uh, I believe tomorrow, uh, we are going to debut the poster and the trailer for the uh, Dirty Country uh, no. for uh, Chop and Steel, the movie they made about us, um, about our uh, morning news appearances as the strongman duo, but it's kind of about uh, this this show as well. Uh, Chop and Steel is going to be playing in April on a big two-week tour nationwide. Hopefully it's coming to your city. The poster, I th- we've teased it, but it's officially uh, out tomorrow. And We can't uh, show it now? Nope, we can't show uh. it. Here, here's one thing that we lobbied hard for 
was uh so you know they have the credits at the bottom like directed by and then all the actors who are in it and like executive producers and all that we we were like we have to say the in association with the melindas because a lot of melindas did throw in some money to get this movie made and so it says it on the credits you know what just show it just let's just show it okay let's just show it who cares yeah Yeah. yeah. do you have it handy uh i can pull it up i don't know if (laughs) i let me draw something real fast i don't know if i have the most recent version but i'll sure yeah who cares yeah, yeah, why do we have to wait until the release? Like, yeah. Well, who's going to see? The, this, we're the right? bad boys. We're chopping steel. We're the bad boys, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to show everybody the movie. Uh, the uh, the. Let's see if this is. Are you vamping right now? Well, yeah, but uh, the reason, the reason I'm excited I'm ex- to show everybody the movie. <laughs> the, I like this poster. I don't know if this is the most recent version, but uh, this is by Chris Bilheimer, the guy who uh, designed, uh, among other classic 90s albums, In the Airplane Over the Sea by Neutral Milk Hotel, R.E.M.'s Monster, most of the Foo Fighters albums. He's got bona fides and uh, he wanted to do this. So here it is, the world premiere. Nobody else has seen this of the chop and steel movie poster uh you can see it's got a bit of a vhs uh, what are you laughing at george the what tagline's are you laughing at? awesome oh okay good yes <laughs> I, I, I love it it's great <laughs> yes okay nick can you zoom in on the we can see it in association with the melindas if that's yeah yeah if that's this oh, i'm just noticing my version. tan line here uh in the poster i'm glad that's uh i'm just noticing my stomach <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be on a lot of posters. Oh, this is printed backwards for some reason. Uh, huh. this, this is not the final version of the poster. <laughs> no, maybe it no. should be. That's another yeah. gap by the yeah, uh, those zany the, Nick and Joe guys. Yeah. So anyway, I don't have the final version, but this is pretty close to what the final version will be, and we wanted to give you the Melinda's a sneak peek at it. So, uh, but look for the official drop of that and the, the incredible trailer. I, I was, the trailer makes the movie look very good. So that's coming out. I think tomorrow, the, I think onion AV or the AV club is going to world premiere it. So we can't show it to you tonight, but, uh, this week. Um, all right, cool. Steve, what are people saying in the chat? So they say anything, uh, are they, uh, anything funny so far? I want to hear the funny stuff. Well, I'll give you one. They said it's 257, ep- 20, 257 episodes. Any word on the comet yet? Are we uh, are we safe? Are we anything? The you know, for the opening. Yeah. What comet? You know, you know the mythology of the show that starts every episode. Why we yeah. do this show? Oh. <laughs> we're trying. We're looking for that tape. Oh um, yeah. J- no. That's my. No. That's that's my bad. I'm supposed to be looking for that. Yeah. Um, well. j- j- do you want to, George? Do you want to do another uh, version of the song? Do you want to do like, I, no, I feel like right got, now <laughs> live? Yeah. I don't know, like an update. There like were two men. It's called yeah. It's called "Dirty Country for Old Men." It's gonna okay. be a uh, yeah. It's gonna be a country song. Um, I will say a lot of people in the comments are uh, excited about the uh, movie, and they should be. Uh, I got to see it uh, along with George um, at uh, Tribeca, and it was a tr- it's tremendous. So I'm excited yeah. for everybody else to get. It to was see. a hit. It's a fun one. Yeah. They've made some changes since then, so it's worth seeing. Yeah, I look forward seeing to it at a festival. So yeah, um, okay, Steve, what's what's behind you? Uh, I'm glad you asked. Let me cover up. Uh, not mute. Cover up. There it is. So I am selling out this week for Micah, whose um, band is called Seventh Day Adventure, and has a new album out. It is, uh, and the album is an experimental indie electronic project. They use synthesizer, guitars, drum machines, along with homemade instruments made from old tape recorders. The album is called It Just Existed in the Land of the Cool and is out on all major platforms. Oh, I'm not doing a great job covering <laughs> up, but you can see uh, uh, like above me. Are. Yeah, it gets a little bit different. Well, I found by just doing it with my fingers, then I'd have my uh, big smudge on my camera. So, uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's uh, they, the album uh, cover was made by a friend who painted the tape. And, uh, yeah, check it out. It's on all of the uh, major platforms. And remember, support the Melinda's or support us. And how. And how. Um, I love the cover art a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, good, that's right? super cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it. it's like a play on Seventh-day Adventist, Seventh-day Adventure. That's where my mind went to. Okay. But, I, you know, My- Micah didn't, didn't comment on that. All right. Micah, if you're in the comments, let us know. Too cool. 
Um, all, all right. right. Let's uh, what do we want to get into? Uh, hey, I got a new uh, segment. This is my first corner, my first new corner that I'm pitching to you guys. This is a Joe's pitch corner. Um, so there's this guy, CJ Karachi. We have a lot of his videos. Uh, this is a d- DVD, but he always looks cool. And he's always just like, looks like a GI Joe character, like a real life GI Joe character. And he's always out there and he's always doing uh, strength stuff. And he looks like a tough guy. But then once he starts talking, he's like referencing movies like Caddyshack and Austin Powers a lot. And it's clear that he's improvising this entire thing. Yeah. I think he has a rough outline that he's going off of, but it's like this show, you know, you, you don't know necessarily what's going to come out of his mouth. So that's uh, what this new segment is going to be all about. It's going to be called, here's, here's the title, and I hope you're really excited when you hear it. It's called. Oh. Welcome. Oh. Let's get it. Cry of the Karachi. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. So. <laughs> I have like 18 uh-huh. minutes of selects of CJ Karachi. So he's he's and... exposing way too much of his Karachi there. Uh... <laughs> and yeah, I'm he's... the one who's crying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's shooting his Karachi right at yeah. us. Karachi um, shot. <laughs> so, he, so this is, I think this is one of my favorites. He, he frequently brings up Austin Powers. Like he gets sidetracked. I think maybe he gets bored doing the exercises for people of the, 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 the Navy SEAL workouts and stuff like that. So then he dips into some of his favorite comedy movies and he references those. <laughs> so uh, here is uh, CJ Crouchy taking a break from stretching uh, to, to, yeah, to, to chit chat, to riff. Famous words of our man, Austin Powers. Now I want you guys to behave, behave. Here we go. Stretch it out. Remember Austin Powers filling out the application? Sex? Yes, please. Classic. Stretch it out. Dr. Evil. Somebody called him Mr. Evil. He didn't spend six years in evil doctor school to be called Mr. Evil. <laughs> yeah, oh, I remember that part. Uh, switch it over. It's right, like watching it two movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Cry of the Karachi. So that's going to be... Uh... And I think that's like a good opening one because they're always short and they're always, sure. yeah. So that's good. All right. Well, let's get into an, another regular segment for this opening. It's fairly short. It's uh, this week in flying windows. Here we go. Okay. This one comes from uh, Matthew and uh, it's, a swimming video called Happy Laps. And uh, after I play Happy Laps, which has uh, a lot of flying windows coming at us, it's a swimming video. I'm going to give you an update because last week's controversial flying windows, we have some clarity on that from our flying window guru, Wayne. Oh, wow. Look at, I mean, these are, God. each window has a mind of its this own. Like, yeah. This is like the Great Wall of of flying windows and look at this man flying through this submerged man with bubbles coming out i yeah. know those, those won't be counted as windows but no but but the bubbles uh you know they are the windows into the sea yeah, so have, yeah as, as steve as said a, as a wise man once said that's right yeah this took hundreds of years to build this this uh wall of win- giant wall of windows it did yeah, yeah. No, some people there's spent their entire lives building this. Some people died windows. building it. Yeah. yeah. It, there's a from space. What is, what is that even? A dolphin, dolphin man. A man, the man, yeah. Man with a part of one arm missing. That's the Happy Laps Flying Windows. Thank you, uh, Matthew, for sending that in. Um, now, uh, let me just read quickly what Wayne said. Now, we had flying VHS tapes. And controversial, I think most of us said no to that. However, yeah. Wayney said last week's flying windows are indeed flying windows. She said several factors came into play. As I always say, if it flies, it's a window. The VHS, <laughs> she always says that. She's a school teacher and the kids always hear that. The VHS tapes in episode 256 are flying windows because of their rapidness and the fact that they overlap. Episode 118 also features an overlap pattern of flying VHS tapes. I don't know. I can't even remember what those were. She said, as much as I want to say it's not a flying window, the editor made it in the style of flying window, similar to the flying butt windows. 
Do you remember the flying butt windows? <laughs> no. And that's something I should remember, too. I know. You would think we'd all remember that. <laughs> how did, my, how oh. did my brain dispose of that? I think it was for Hunk. I think it was the... Um, yes, I remember now. I believe it was a Denver cable show where she was dreaming of men's buns and heart shapes, I think. Okay, that's what I'm assuming. But I, was anyway. there, I was there for the show? Yeah, we were okay. all there. All right. We were all there. <laughs> I and I, I edited it and I don't even remember it. So, but Wayne he said, hopes that hope that helps. And indeed it does. Can, so thank you. Wayne, can I ask the official what, why is, why is Wayne the expert on flying windows? She's the only one who's dedicated enough to count each one we've shown. So I, yeah. therefore she gets to I guess in, be the judge yeah. as long as she I wants agree. to. It's a, it's like the Supreme I, court. We can never kick her out. Yeah. And, and plus she remembers these windows and we don't. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Similar to the flying butt windows, these could also be. I mean, it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, she's the she's, expert. Nobody's gonna. Nobody's gonna level. beat that. Yeah. Okay. When you're the official expert. Thanks uh, to hey, you, many, but I like some controversy. So let us let us know in the comments whether you you're agree not with afraid to. Or not. You're not afraid to ruffle some feathers when it comes to flying windows. You're just not. You're no. not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I, I, I'm willing to show. Uh, Incomplete movie posters before we're supposed to as well. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get in some flying window or flying windows. Good lord. Uh, raviolis. Okay. Come on. Let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. Um. Okay. I have uh, two new potential segments that I want to show you but do you want to go first nick or do you want me to go first you go with their first segment okay all right so this one is the reenactment corner i couldn't remember if i did this if i pitched this before or not but like so many of these videos they have reenactments of what you're supposed to do what you're not supposed to do uh and we come across a lot of these and recently i came across two and i'm going to show you one i hope you're real excited about it and then um Next week, I'll show another one, but this one is more of a physical one. I think the physical ones are, uh, I don't know, just uh, just easier to swallow, I think. So uh, let's uh, reenactment corner. Uh, I don't have a, a graphic for it yet, so pretend there's like a snappy graphic. I spent all my time on the crotchy graphic today. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this is a re this week in reenactments, all right? And it's uh, for a video called... Medial meniscus injury to the knee, a patient died. <laughs> Doesn't that kind of sound like a, a Def Leppard song? Oh, yeah. Listen to that. Yeah. Wait, but the title. When you fall <laughs> on your knee. <laughs> the title's a guided by voices song, though. It's <laughs> a patient guy. The meniscus injury. <laughs> so I guess this is a video that they would play for people who needed this uh, knee surgery. As That's they're falling, day. apparently. Right, exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of reenactments of people falling. Similar injuries this isn't a result when the but... bent, weight-bearing knee is twisted, often, for instance, in downhill skiing or merely tripping on the sidewalk. <laughs> Pretty Ooh, good. Well, that's good. With increasing good age, there are also degenerative changes within the joint. And in the knees of an older person, ligaments tear more easily than in those of the young. Moreover, Watch because one. most twisting stresses and impact forces are relatively small, pretty good. the event causing a knee injury may not even be recalled. Oh, the, remember the those automatic I had things? One. Yeah, yeah I, had a, I had a Mazda that had one. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. You never had to buckle your seatbelt. No fuss, no muss. Exactly. Um, all right. More Whenever the meniscus tears, however, swelling and pain restrict the range of motion of the leg. Yeah. In some cases, the knee seems... But see, he's not even playing tennis. He's like on his way to play tennis, and he hurt his knee. ...to lock. This usually means that a torn portion of a meniscus is dislodged into the joint. As a result of this interference, the knee may become momentarily stuck <laughs> in certain play. positions <laughs> and may even buckle. Or the guy's pretty good, though. I'll yeah. give him that. They they got some good uh, stunt people for this. Do you think that Is fanny it, pack would cause a knee injury it, too, because of the weight being displaced right, right. on the lady? Right. Mm -hmm. Give way under the weight of the body. Without appropriate treatment, however, it can easily displace again, causing the knee to lock. Once He's still more. going. He's, he went to play tennis. Tennis isn't that fun. Give it up, dude. Come on. 
key to lock once Switch more. Switch to pickleball. This damage. Is so this this I, I debated. I wanted to do this as a George's deathbed vision, <laughs> but I decided to do it for reenactment corner. But this is a, this is a consider this a, a George's deathbed vision. It's analogous to the deep imprints made by walking on wet sand in stiletto heels. <laughs> by Which comparison, happens to be my a bare footprint <laughs> causes comparatively little disruption to the surface of the beach. <laughs> when it hurts, <laughs> you can't play tennis anymore. They, uh, their album with the Def Leppard album would call, be called uh, Miniscia. Oh, Miniscia. Uh, yes, yeah. for sure. That's good. Um, George, was that a George's deathbed vision? Stiletto heels on a on a sandy beach in slow motion. Yes, yeah. I, I would have liked a, a like a, cl a closer zoom of it. But yeah, I, I was leaning more toward what Nick said that it's it's more of a new fetish for me than a uh, deathbed <laughs> oh, okay. vision. All right, yeah. Um, all right, so that's a new corner. What do you guys think? Should uh, keep that going? Reenact yep. the corner. Keep them okay. up. Definitely right. hard to I'll top that, point. but that's a good start. Certainly, I got yeah. a timely tie-in with. Um, with uh, St. Patrick's Day on Friday. Uh, it's an Irish karaoke tape we have. And um, what I realized was that every Irish song involves misery in some way. And, you know, normally, like, I think if you're doing American style karaoke, you're doing a lot of like, uh, I don't know, Journey or, um, you know, you're doing um, Summer Lovin' and some Carefree, you know, maybe some Meat Love songs. Uh, but it, it, I just can't imagine performing these in public. So here's a uh, now it's Irish karaoke and uh, sing along about these songs about uh, death and dying and misery and famines, heart, heartbreak and famines. Yep. I mean, they've suffered enough. Let's have the songs be fun. But uh, I mean, they sound cheerful, don't they? Yeah. Of course, Danny Boy, one of the saddest songs of all time. All the flowers are dying. Are dying. I didn't know that, that was. It's about somebody dying. Watch them fade away and die. Okay. In the creek. <laughs> no offense. Kind of start you off, and you—they appear in a huff. Who wrote these lyrics? Frank Worley. <laughs> <laughs> I can see by you were oh, good lord! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Irish people. <laughs> hope you died well. Yeah, that was—I uh -huh. didn't even get to that part. Yeah, uh, and I hope you I died. Hope <laughs> Wow, Morrissey is really branching out. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, in all seriousness, I hope you guys all die well and die clean. <laughs> Thank you. It's like, yeah. my plan. <laughs> but wait, wait, things are turning around. Oh, okay. Many an hour, sweet happiness. I spent in the beautiful town. Okay, sounds great. Uh oh. Fuck. Oh no. <laughs> uh, I couldn't even stay there. But the sorrow and the suffering. <laughs> the pain. Uh, the killing of the died were all done in vain. Okay, yeah. Died of a <laughs> uh, uh, so she died. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now we're talking about her ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now it's oh, Irish karaoke. Oh, so many so more to get to. Steve, yeah. are you Irish? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's even more uh, sorrow and suffering. Yields of Irish and Rye, and Long came. Black Veil. Oh, yeah, stuff. a Long Black Veil was in there. Yep, I was just a little too slow yeah. to include in that montage. But uh, <laughs> happy St. Patrick's Day, I guess. Happy-ish, yeah. Sure, I, but they always yeah. Santa sing it with like, a, all right, well, we're I mean, if you didn't listen to the lyrics, you'd be like, oh, this is a joyful song. But then it's there, like, there was we're one getting there. embalmed. We're getting embalmed. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, the gallows humor is what the Irish are known for as well. And the, the pub crawl after they die, it's all very morbid, but happy at the same time. So, yeah. uh, wait, Steve, do a pub crawl after you die? 
Yeah, there's all these those stories about how you take your your dead, uh, you know, drinking buddy Irish wake around for one more round. And is that what they do? Yeah. In an Irish wake, you celebrate. You put the body on the bar, and everyone drinks. You're supposed to celebrate the life, not more than the death. But then you put them in the bog, and then several yeah. thousand years later. Rich, you Lindell man. You get yourself a Lindell <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah. Rich, look up Rich, Richard ha- Richard Harris has a story. The ag- Irish actor has a story about uh, having his dead dead mate and taking him around in a pub, pub crawl. He told on Letterman once. It's uh, yeah, it's morbid, but it's also funny at the same time. <sighs> um, so all right. Aaron Gobra, everybody. What's the what's the other corner? Aaron Gobra to you too. This is uh, another new corner. Now I'm having trouble with the the name of this one. I didn't make a graphic for this one either, but the conceit of it is. I thought about calling it, is the messaging clear here or not? So I'll show you something. And then you tell me if the message that they tried to convey is clear or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, it might be yes and it might be no. You never know. Uh, I was also thinking like calling it like loud and clear or maybe something like how hard did they nail this? Something like that. If you guys can come up with any ideas for the name of this in in Melinda's too, put it in the in the message boards. if the, I, I need a title for this because that's crucial. So this one came from Sin of the City. So we're tra- we're uh, digitizing all the Sin of the City tapes. Our winner of the 2022 VHS of the Year award, and there's still we're still milking it for more. There are all these. It was a public access show, so there are all these public access like locally made commercials. And this one is I don't well. I'm just gonna let it speak for itself. Pretend you're watching public access in Iowa City, and this comes up. Is the messaging clear here? Yes or no? Okay. Mentally, I'm in Iowa City right now. Okay. All right. Are you able to see it? Sportstron. Yep. Sportstron. Here we go. Sportstron this summer. Audio isn't clear. No. <laughs> Join us this summer for the 2004 RBO Invitational. Listen, Greg Reisner, the returning champion, will try to make it two in a row. Terrible first punt. Well, watch this one. Tell me if this is a good one. The same person from the first one. (laughs) Better than the first, but not great. I'm seasick. (laughs) Does everyone have the same body shape in Iowa City? (laughs) What? I'm not saying that it's a good or bad one, but does everyone have the same body shape in Iowa City? Uh, at the RBO Invitational, yes, they, they do. Okay. Yeah. Catch the Stroke by Stroke coverage sponsored by Checkers. Checkers, you know you got to eat. So what do you think? Was the messaging clear in that commercial on public access in Iowa City from, what year was it? Did I say it was 2000, 2004 Four. was the RBO International Invitational? Um, so what do you think? Was the messaging clear? Do you guys know what they were promoting there? Tripods. Yeah. <laughs> they were trying to sell It was tripods. a cautionary tale about yeah. not using one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yep. In that respect, I would say very clear messaging. Okay, good. So it was a clear message. So what do you think? Is, is that the title of this new corner? Is the messaging clear here? Is anybody saying anything on the... I like uh, how Joe's, hard... Joe's, what do you think about this messaging corner? <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> I, think, uh, I don't know. I think that's the, the main one I'm seeing. Uh, everything like, else, everyone's commenting on it. I like how hard did they nail this. They should okay. say, you should save that for 100 and, 101 Jesuses. I th- yeah, I think oh, there, right. I think there could. Uh, how hard did they nail this? Wouldn't pigeonhole you as much on just messaging? It would just be the execution in general. And it, I think you could make a fun intro with a hammer. Oh um, sure, okay. I like sound that. Sound effects, yeah. maybe some Hanna Barbera sound effects. Pull up and your then library. at the end, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> boink boink, yeah, yeah, auga auga. Uh-huh. Um, and then afterwards, you guys can go around and talk about how hard they nailed it. Yes, you, like was I say, line drive. Yeah, get yeah. His thumb on this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. Okay, all, all right. right. That's Another... my pitch for right. what the title should be. Well, here's a fun one. It's a uh. A video that I found a while back in our office. It's the Games Magazine, the video, Volume One, and the the connection to VCR Party. This comes from 1988. But George worked at Games Magazine briefly. George, what did you do? 
I was, let's see, I sent out t-shirts when people won prizes. I was the crossword puzzle tester to see mm. how long it took to finish them. Um, I, <laughs> I replied are you, are you to fast emails. at them? No, that was, I'd never done them before other than like for the dumb school ones. And I was pretty bad at it. Oh, um, okay. So that well, was, yeah, so I I was a game. I didn't subscribe to Games Magazine, but I would get one every year in December because they would always put their end of this is before the internet. You could get their end of the year board games list. So like I remember finding one and seeing them mentioning Settlers of Catan in the early two thousands. Well, I get the internet was around, but there weren't like there wasn't board game media the way there is. You had to buy a magazine to find it find all that out, and they had fun puzzles in it. So the idea was they made a video version that you could play along with, like a VCR game. I guess you could only do this once, but I thought maybe we and the Melinda's watching live tonight could play along with one of the games in this tape. And then, Joe, for EP mode, um, we already taped this, but we watched more of this and played along with it. So if you're a, a patreon.com slash found footage uh, festival subscriber at the $10 and up level on Thursday, you can watch us play even more of this. But uh, let's get it. Was a little... It was fun. It was fun. Yeah, it's fun. This is a more successful VCR game. I'm not even making fun of this. I'm just well, it's just but, a fun game we can play. But I think, but you can only play this once. So I, I would say yeah. it's kind of unsuccessful in that regard. In that, yeah. there's no rewatchability at all. You throw this right. in the garbage when you're finished with it. So, but it, it's a long tape, so you could watch part of it, play one of the games. You know, you could make a meal out of it. But either way, this is a. I had to edit, a, a edit out a sad, <laughs> sad meal out of it. <laughs> the Swanson's TV dinner at home. <laughs> really is. That's a watching sad Iowa meal. public access. But right. here we go. Welcome to the first issue of Games, the video edition, where you, the viewer, will be riddled, tricked, and teased with puzzles and games of all sorts. Make sure you have your pencil handy. Some of these won't be easy. Do you know this person? I'll bet you do. He's sort of a video age Frankenstein monster put together with parts of other people's bodies. See if we show you this part, and then this part, he becomes much easier to ID. Now, who have we electronically cut up to assemble these unusual faces? All right, you this? get the premise? Mm -hmm. I got it. Okay. Yep. Is J.P. McNick. Half of them can really play to an audience. The other half can really play a bass guitar. Okay, any guesses here, J.P. McNick? Paul McCartney and uh, Jack Nicholson. Okay. I was gonna say Jack Nicholson. Um, okay. Oh yeah, the Mac McCartney. Yeah, McCartney. Yeah, his hair. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go with uh, George. George, you got it. Okay, it's gotta we'll be it. We'll find out momentarily. Who are they? This is Inspector Jones. In both of his former lives, he searched for things. In oh, one, yeah. he looked for a rather large diamond. In the other, he searched for an even bigger treasure. Guesses. Yep. Yep. Uh, Indiana yeah, Jones. Jones and Inspector Cousin. Yep. Peter Sellers, you're saying? Okay. Meet Prince John. Before getting mixed up together, both these people were associated Meet with our thumbnail. <laughs> One taught them, the Joe other and Nick caught them. <laughs> okay, any guesses here? This is perhaps the toughest one. But John also... Candy. Okay. Prince John. Not Prince. Olivia Newton John? Oh, yeah. Okay. All I'm right. say John Candy and, uh, yeah. Okay. This is Lizard Tartan. Nice outfit, huh? <laughs> These two folks split up and got back together so many times, we've lost track. The costume is from the most expensive picture they ever this made. This is what together. I knew. Would you guys get this one? <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor. And Richard Burton. Richard Burton. Yep. Richard Burton. There it is. Okay. Yep. Who are they? Lizard Tartan. <laughs> Meet Donnie Spade. He's a combination of two of the toughest guys on the screen, except their careers were about 40 years apart. Any uh, guesses here? David Spade, for sure. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> and, um, and Don Sparrow. Yep. yep. <laughs> Don Sparrow. <laughs> the illustrator for, uh, yeah, Saturday morning cartoons. Um, you want to take a guess? Uh, what's it? Uh, Bogey. Humphrey, uh, Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart. And. Uh, uh, who's the other lower one? half? What I don't know. Mickey Rourke. Okay, we'll find out. 
Answer's coming up next. <laughs> I love that. Our first that. video schizophrenic, looks like J.P. McNick, a Paul Rubens is a combination <laughs> of Beatle Paul McCartney yep. and actor Jack Nicholson. Oh, yeah. Inspector <laughs> Jones was made from parts of two great fictional characters, Inspector Clouseau and Indiana Jones. Prince John was made from parts of football commentator John oh. Madden and the gorgeous Victoria Somebody got Principal. that in the call, call, Lizard comment. Wait, who is that? Somebody the, got it in the comments. Go the gorgeous now. Victoria Principal. So you got Who's Victoria that? Bashor. Prince John was made from parts of football commentator John Madden <laughs> and the gorgeous Victoria Principal. Lizard Tartan so people got came it? from parts of Richard Burton. Steve? Mixed with a they little got the, Elizabeth they Taylor. Got John Candy. I mean, not John Candy. They got John Madden, certainly. I don't think they got the other hand. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. From the no, film Cleopatra, Donnie Spade is a mixture of Sam Spade himself, Humphrey Bogart, and Miami Vice's Don Johnson. Uh. Is your alma mater games magazine with a successful video i had fun with that one that, that was actually was what fun my uh, my job interview was that exactly oh, that. so i knew the first one passed the test yeah they should all be john madden and somebody else it should be yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, there was an unfortunate al jolson one i had to edit out which i mean even in 1988 you should know not to put that one on but uh <laughs> really uh, depends who the other person was too i don't what was uh, it do you want me to tell you yeah yeah know. I'm not sure. Eddie Murphy. Oh, oh. yeah. It was, uh, I was like, games, come on. <laughs> you can't do yeah. that even, even in 88. You can't I can't do believe that. I worked there. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, an otherwise very successful video. And there's a lot more where that came from. So if you want to see more and play along, uh, join on Patreon and uh, watch us on uh, our exclusive episode on Thursday. I believe that's our raviolis. Yes, that's it for the raviolis. Let's get into some cyber videos. Do you got the graphic, Nick? Yes, I do. Graphic for cyber video. And I have what's going to be, I think, the shortest cyber video I've ever played for this one. Here we go. This is a this is a really cool graphic, isn't it? I like this mm -hmm. one. Okay, this is another St. Patrick's Day tie-in. When I think St. Patrick's, when I think Irish, um, I think um, House of Pain. And uh, this is called House of Pain Doggo. This is a YouTube video that I found. It's very short. <laughs> okay, that's... <laughs> What it, that, that should have been looped. That should have been looped. That needs I, to be looped. Well, I looped it myself a couple more okay. times, so here we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, there's House of Pain Doggo. Uh, that's it. <laughs> End the show now. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I especially like that it kind of sounds like it. it yeah, it's not 100%. perfect. <laughs> No, but close enough where, like, as a dog owner, there's a lot of things that you extrapolate from the animal, uh -huh. your voices uh, that, that your animal makes. So it I totally kind of sounds it. like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Certainly did. <laughs> I sort of heard it. Yeah. Um, all right, Steve. What do you got, Steve? You were bragging earlier today about how great your jock sham was. Well, I do think it's a it's a good a jock sham, and it it features my mentor, uh, sellout Steve. It's you know a lot of people think I just do it off the my cuff, but no, I actually had a mentor. <laughs> or a teacher, if you will. And this goes back to 2014. Wait, 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 wait. You do it off your cuff? Some people think I do it off my cuff, but I don't. Uh, okay. Off the cuff. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Well, listen, well, you're getting... Uh, you're interrupting. Luckily, nobody okay, is yeah, going yeah. to interrupt my uh, okay. mentor in the, uh, the live 2014 World Series uh, MVP um, announcement. I don't even know what it's called. But here it is. Uh, and you tell me if you see any similarities. Okay. This is coming off your cuff then, right? It's coming off someone's cuff. Okay. Now to present the MVP award presented by Chevrolet. <gasps> yes. I also, I remember I this also one. Think, I also think uh, Bud Selig is playing the part of Nick when I'm reading my, uh, <laughs> my sellout, Steve. So you guys got that to look for too. Trying this, to help out. This is we incredible. Have from Chevrolet, the regional zone manager, Rick Wildey. <laughs> Thanks. 
Madison, Thanks. congratulations. Um, as the official sponsor or the official vehicle of Major League Baseball, Chevrolet is proud to participate in this uh, prestigious award. Um, along with our dealers, we are also extremely honored to give back to this sport uh, by supporting baseball in cities and towns across this nation. At Chevrolet, we have um, we have also been proud of the latest and greatest uh, technology in our truck lineup, which is the all-new 2015 uh, Chevy Colorado. Um, oh boy, this is rough. It combines class winning and leading um, uh, support the um, you know, technology support and us. stuff with um, <laughs> Wi-Fi powered by OnStar. It's sitting there on screen to recognize <laughs> your performance in this, this 2015 uh, off my cuff. I proudly <laughs> present to you very own set of keys, brand new 2015 uh, Chevy Colorado. Congratulations. Perfect. No notes. Congratulations. <laughs> wow. Oh, he's I a Chris Farley really character. It. That's a Chris Farley oh. character, isn't it? Like, <laughs> Matt Foley. Oh, I just saw him and I've never, uh, you know, felt so much for another human being. Alive. I know. <laughs> I did too. And I've watched that video like 500 times too. And I just like, and I, if you notice, like I'm watching it like this, like mm -hmm. you could tell, like I'm crit, like I'm holding hard onto myself. Like, like secondhand uh, embarrassment. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, by the way, pe people love the the theme song to Jack Shams and Steve. You never play it, so here it is, just for all the uh, people who are going to complain. Oh yeah, I it's forgot the Jack Shams. Jack Shams. Jack Shams. Jack Shams. Boring you with a signature draw. It's a Jack Shams. Jack Shams. Jack Shams. Jack Shams. This rap is done. Now it's over to you. This rap is done. Now it's over to you. <laughs> yeah, that's um, great. Dead past. Um, why, why didn't they just have like a professional go out there instead of saying, let's have some guy who doesn't speak on camera that often go out and let's write some notes down on a little sheet? Why didn't they have a professional go I, out there? I mean, why don't you guys do the same thing at the beginning of your show <laughs> that you do every week? Because <laughs> you're a sellout well, Steve, that's why. Well, but we're not on uh, the World Series post-game show, True. you know? True. Like, I mean, for crying out loud. Also, like, Madison Baumgartner, he didn't need a new truck. Like, why? No. I don't know. I don't, I don't get, like, why they give like, them the if prize. If you're on Celebrity Jeopardy, you get you do it for charity. You yeah. Know, he didn't need a new car, but I'm no, guessing no. the dealer paid, or whoever that guy was, paid <laughs> handsomely to be have the honor of presenting that. So, it's, yeah, he's like the VP of Chevy. So. Yeah. But you would have thought not anymore, somebody not. else with a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit smoother delivery. Uh, all right, George, you got anything cool? I think so. I, I found a bumper crop of corporate training f tapes from 1979. Nice. Today I'm going to show tape M38, General Mechanical Personnel Safety by the NUS Corporation. N-U-S, NUS? Ah, um, uh, yes, NUS. Yes, but this yeah. tape has something for everyone. It's got a host that sounds like AMC's Bill Curtis, but looks like Wayne Brian Meyer. Uh, ominous overtones, unexplained mm -hmm. stretches of tedium, and timely tie-in for Pi Day, a little bit of math. So again, here right. is tape 38. If Depending on how this goes, maybe this will be recurring. Oh, here I am celebrating St. Patrick's Day, and it's Pi Day, and I didn't even realize it. Oh, good intro. You know, there are monsters on the other side of that door. They're waiting for the unwary, the unsuspecting. Oh, not oh, vampires or dragons or beasts, voice. but they're monsters all the same. And we're going to be taking a look at them in just a moment. But first, we have to dress for the occasion. After all, it's a jungle in there. So, I'll put this on. Safety glasses. You'll be a pack-a-day smoker, right? Gloves. A voice like that doesn't come naturally. First time he's ever worn a flannel shirt. This guy is a professional announcer. Now we're ready to go on the other side. The other Let's side. Go. This Pack is our brands. jungle. And the monsters we're looking for take a keen eye to spot. But they're all around us. <clears throat> you see those guys working overhead? All right, as careful as they are, sooner or later somebody's going to drop something. And if you're below and hear heads up, don't stop to look around, get undercover. You won't have time to see what's coming or where it's coming from, anyhow. Is that Jack Let's take Davis? a break. Maybe there's a more Walker. Wow. John Takara, perhaps? That's pretty cool. They're really, uh... You fold it in. Suppose it... you have to do some work above floor <laughs> They're level. They're really going for this and metaphor. And you have to climb a ladder to get there. If you don't inspect it before you use it, 
it can get you into a lot of trouble. To be stable, the foot of the ladder has to be placed a certain distance from the wall. The correct distance is equal to one-fourth the length of the ladder. Math. If the ladder is 12 oh. feet long, its foot should be three feet away from the wall. I didn't know about this. A 20-foot ladder would have its foot five feet from the wall. When you're on the job, safety is your responsibility. Now let's break for a minute. Smokes a cigarette. <laughs> oh yeah. That's all that's left of him. Uh. Wow. End of the shift, huh? The monster, the monster got him. Really taking their time there. <laughs> uh, I think it was just showing to lift with your knees. <laughs> Sloppy housekeeping. You know, it would have taken about a minute what to I clean up that What I complain about with my wife. <laughs> now back to the what video. What you're looking at are steel-toed safety shoes. There are also unsafety shoes. When there's water on the floor, wearing shoes like these is asking for trouble. Just watch out for the monsters. Doesn't that logo look like Anus Corporation? Anus Corporation. Yeah, corporation. Looks like Anus Corporation. Right. Yeah. That's where I went. That, that's what I was building up entirely to, is the <laughs> Anus Corporation. Okay. But, but the, N, the NUS Training Corporation is a subsidiary of Halliburton. Mm. Mm. It's known for their CEO, former CEO, Dick Cheney, the Deepwater Horizon, ecological disaster, the Iraq War. It's got everything. But there are, there are like 50 of these on uh, archive.org. Ooh, and, uh, from and, that same company? From that, yeah, from like that series. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. all right. You got oh, a new, yes, you got a new corner. Well, so many new corners today. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right, let's get into probably the most famous corner of the show. It's IMGs. Chicken shit. Yeah! In that corner, video transmission. Uploaded with no intention. Harvested semi-ethically. Welcome to IMG. Um, we have a bumper crop of a of a season so far of IMGs. It's been a lot of good ones lately. And uh, Brad sent in uh, IMG 4932. It had two views on it. And Brad from Iowa sent this one. And here's the thing. IMGs are usually pretty short. You know, they upload them. These are the least popular videos on the Internet. And you, you don't normally see anything more than two minutes long in terms of IMGs. This one is 30 minutes long. Okay. And he called it Half Moon Movers. And the title intrigued me, and I, I zipped around on here, and I think I know why he called it Half Moon Movers. Uh, take a look. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, when you move, you have to bend over a lot. And, you know, when you move stuff, and then your, your butt crack hangs out. And so, if you don't have a waist, if you're of a certain build, yeah, that does happen. Yeah. I mean, do you see them? Like, you got to look for them, but like, I, I don't even know what this video is for. Even the woman has a half moon. Well, that's all. Especially the, that's all I see is that yeah. woman. Yeah. Half moon. The one before wow. there was a there was a gentleman as well. There's a guy before. Yeah, there was a guy oh, there with that one. Oh yeah! yeah. Wow. Hey, we yeah. need some blurring on this. The one, the first one was amazing. It was. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh. What you the first? That was, uh, that was a waxing crescent. I think. Oh, that yeah, one. That yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the half moon movie. That, that that was almost a production of the Anus Corporation. There, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, I, I just always have the sense of every time I bend over, I'm always paranoid about my ass crack hanging out. Aren't you? Yeah, I'm but always worried about yours too. <laughs> If you're in the middle of moving, I mean, I guess you just got to. But if you know there's a camera it. there, too, no, I that's don't know. True. That's true. Of course, we go around the edge. This, you're building a life here in Grand Rapids. Look at the bottom left. This is, is it, amazing. Wow. Wow. Do you I see it down there? That woman, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I think the, the, the uh, low rise pants craze wasn't great for a lot of. Uh, <laughs> Figures probably. But, but I don't know. Maybe don't don't wear them while you're working in the with yeah. the cameras there. I don't know. Would have been fine. Maybe yeah. this is an OnlyFans yeah. account <laughs> for people who are really. Captain's into... blog. We're wrapping up tile. They're doing grout. Let's just. 
Oh, yeah. Man. This Either is wear always... a longer shirt or a higher pants. Don't you know that like when your crack's hanging out, don't you feel it? Don't you feel like the, the wind on your crack? Like, don't you feel it? <laughs> it's a scorpion song, right? <laughs> 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 the one on your crack. Yes. Uh, all right. So uh, 30 minutes of that. Yeah. Uh, I watched the whole thing. There's a lot of crack, ass cracks in that. Uh, 4842. Chris sent this one in. Chris, uh, one view. This had one view. Uh, Chris called it Cut Your Belly Button. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel today. I'm going to just cut your out of the belly button. Here's a cut your. So we got to cut your. Hope you guys enjoy the cut your. Okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> You're seeing a lot of body parts mm-hmm. in this particular uh, round of RMGs. Um, and then, but we're going to end on a somber note here. This is 4724. Monster Mike sent this in. It had five views. It's called I Don't Want to Be Your Friend. I don't want to be the friend in mom. So we're ending on a som- somber note here. Perfect. Yeah. Rocks are done. Got to sleep. Bye. There we go. IMGs for the week. All right. That's our cyber videos for this week. I didn't leave the intro up. I'm very sorry. We're really dropping the ball on uh, intros tonight. Um, Steve, are we getting any good uh, funny comments that we should know? We should do uh, phone calls. Should we do phone calls? Yeah. Is it too late to... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nick's favorite score. Might, <laughs> might be a little too late to pull off uh, that. Sorry, I was uh, enthralled by everyone's uh, cyber videos. I've not been paying attention to the comments. Okay. Well, let's, let's get into a segment we don't do very often. That it done. This is uh, where we Jack answer- Mulcahy, he had the exact same thought I did about uh, the Banshees of uh, Manila. I don't know if you guys... Yeah, but that last video. Oh, I off. don't want to be your friend anymore. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, that's good. That's great. Uh, nice. Jack's watching. Hey, Jack. Jack oh, is well, Lazar. Yeah. Yes. Happy St. Patrick's Day to Jack Mulcahy as well uh, yes. coming up. So thanks for viewing. Um, yeah, so we do a segment where uh, you, the viewers, write in with with questions that only we can answer, and we like to answer them in a segment uh, called That It Had Done. All right, and I got a graphic all ready to go. Here it is. <laughs> That's it. That It Had Done. Right there. All right. So this is, uh, yes, people call in. They're like, hey, what was that one video where you showed that one thing? And we were like, uh, oh, here's what it is. So usually it's, uh, we don't know. Um, well, this this one was from Brad, a different Brad. This is a big week in Brad's. Uh, he said, I've yet to figure out the source to the outro clip. What do you think about Bibra? About what? Uh, no idea what question was asked or what the context was at all. Would love to see the original in a future episode. And so we I, we get that one every so often. I think we've mm-hmm. tackled this, that, and done. But I think it's good to revisit it and and dive back in. So sure. the the laws, uh, their their big hit was a song called "There She Goes," which I think might be the most '90s song of all time. And uh, I feel like it was in the soundtrack to like "So I Married an Axe Murderer" or, or something like probably. that. Probably, I think it was like in in the soundtrack to most movies in the night. Something about Mary, yeah, I don't but know. But that that was their hit, and then they dropped off. Uh, but they had some other good songs. They were they're from Liverpool and um, proper lads. I found out that the laws is a scouser term. Scousers are people from Liverpool. Lands. Yeah, um, uh, scouser term for lads. So they're called the laws. And when you see this video, I, I, I pulled an extended clip from this public access show of the laws playing. These guys are like king of the lads. These guys are proper lads. Um, all right. So we'll watch the longer version of the laws and then we'll watch the full interview at the end up until it stops. So here it is. Lads. Meaning young men who are up to no good. King of the lads right there. Not a bloke. Not a geezer. Not a punter. Nope. Well, not, a, not a not a pensioner. Not a not a sprog. Here we go. Quiet. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What do you think about Bibra? About what? About what? Bibra. What's that? Axel. Bibra. Yeah, Bibra. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's that's all the clip is. 
a general so, uh, confusion about that's what started yeah. World War One. That sort of misunderstanding. <laughs> mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing written about it online. There's just people talking about how this is the greatest video of all time. But from the little research that I did, uh, there were, the laws were playing out a local television station in a small town in central Germany called Bibra. And I think that here's my theory. I think that she probably either didn't speak English very well, and she just knew to say that when she came up instead of saying, oh, excellent. That was a great song. Uh, hey, <laughs> welcome to our town. Hey, what do you think about our local town, Bibra? We, uh, yeah. Did you spend some time in our town? But her English probably wasn't that good. Maybe that's what it was, or she's not very good at interviewing people. And she just said, what do you think about Bibra when <laughs> she came out? <laughs> <laughs> the first thing, and put the mic in their face to these proper in a lads. lad's face. She put a, the mic in a about lad's what? face. About what? He wasn't oh. meeting her halfway either. No. <laughs> he wasn't. He was. The producer's like, about what? <laughs> she does attempt a hello, like right as she comes up. Hello. No. It's yeah, a weird yeah. hello, too. It's a oh. track suit. Let's watch it. What we can look at. Yeah. Hell. What do you think about Bibra? About what? About what? Bibra. What's that? What's that? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it kind of looks like the Sham Wow guy. <laughs> look, at, look at the face right there. Oh, yeah. That's a lad face right there. So, um, all right. So, I think that's uh, that uh, should that have done that, right? I mean, yeah, that's all we I got. That's that all the it, internet has. Uh, that's that have done to you. Is, is uh, there any? We we should track down Brad. the guy from the laws. Uh, Let's get him on. Yeah, yeah. George, you're in a band. You know all. Yeah, musicians. that's how it works. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. I'm yeah, calling you about good. VCR party. About <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll make sure to call <laughs> to record the call. Uh, he gets off the Zoom, and you're like, there he goes again. There, there he, goes. he goes. Yep. Uh, all right, let's get into some announcements for this week, and then we'll uh, we'll say goodbye. Uh, the EP mode, as I mentioned, Games Magazine. Let me tease the game we'll be playing in that. One of them is Spot the Anachronism in a historical pirate uh, skit they did using uh, what I'm guessing are local theater actors. Yeah, it, that was a fun one. That was a really fun one. So, yes. yeah, watch it just for that. Uh, what else? We got Foxy unboxing. We're going to do the first one this Friday. We had a stack full of tapes. It was just Christmas morning for us. And uh, yeah, there's so much good stuff. And I, I, I had to show some restraint not to show you everything. But I don't know. Maybe Jason Hervey fan club was was top, top three that we got. Uh, and I watched it and it lived up to the hype. We pop a little bit in so you can see a preview of it in the unboxing. But I, I digitized the full thing. And ooh, that's going to be an EP mode. It might be. It's going to be featured heavily. Okay, so, good. yeah, good. Um, let me also mention again that we are on tour. I think we're we're probably playing what seems like 70 dates between now and the end of April. Uh, and let me uh, ask the help for the Melinda. So um, you can see the next Thursday we're in Pittsburgh. We're going to be doing volume 10. It's the first time it'll be some new stuff there. Lenora from Midnight Rental is going to be opening for us there. Um, and then in uh, Cleveland, if you want to see Chop and Steel, we'll be at the Cleveland International Film Festival there. Last time we had a, a film there, Joe, um, Toby from uh, yep. American uh, Splendor. Yes, American Splendor. Yes, who Judah Friedlander played his character in the movie. Yeah, we didn't know he was there, but we just, they, they asked a question about the other movie, The Dirty Country. And they said, um, excuse me, I have a question about Larry Pierce. And I thought somebody was doing an impression or a goofy voice. And then afterwards, somebody's like, no, that's Toby, the ultimate nerd from American Splendor. The oh, Harvey I knew it the second he started talking. Yeah. I was like, yes, we got a Toby question. So we hung out with him afterwards. So hopefully he shows up at those screenings um, in Cleveland next Friday and Saturday. Uh, volume 10 again at the Arlington Draft House in Virginia. So if you're in D.C., come see us. Those are always fun. It's a shows. brand new show, too. Uh, it would, we're still working out the kinks. So come watch us flub on stage and try to figure out this Volume 10 show. Dan so. Opsel will be there keeping notes on our flubs. On our, and on our micro reactions. <laughs> <laughs> and then we start this big tour of all Alamo Draft Houses from coast to coast with Chop and Steel. Not only that, but A Life on the Farm, the other movie that uh about the weirdest found video we we've, we've ever discovered um uh is going to be playing as part of a double feature so you can see both or you can just see one or the other 
it's usually Chop and Steel playing at like seven and then A Life in the Farm playing at nine. Another movie produced by uh, the Melinda's here. And uh, so that'll be and it'll be we're going to have photo ops. We're going to have sticks you can chop. Uh, we're going to we're going to make this real dumb. We're going to make gonna it be real, real dumb. dumb. Yeah, yeah. There's you'll a, get free sticks at the door that you can uh, take home with you. Chop. We're going to try to have some uh, bandana giveaways. Uh, there'll be a VHS happy hour there with VHS people selling uh, VHS wares. We'll have merch for sale. And to that end, we're looking for somebody to run our merch. So if you want free admission and want to run a merch table for a couple hours at these shows and you're in or near LA, San Francisco, Denver, Chicago, we already got somebody interested there. Um Madison is a film festival, so we don't need somebody there. But then Austin, Raleigh, and then three nights in New York, and then one in Brooklyn. Uh, looking for help at the merch table. So if you want to come help out, get free admission. Uh, we might throw in a free stick, too. I don't know. What do you think, Nick? Like We, we should have talked about this before. But uh, yeah. free admission to the to the movie, and then maybe a free stick or half price, half price stick. Half price sticks. Yeah, we'll there say 50% off sticks. And then, yeah, we're playing the Albany area. It's Schenectady. I'm sure we'll see some. We, we do have a lot of Melinda's who live up there. So that's uh, volume 10 there and then more to come. But anyway, that's the big tour. I wanted to give uh, you, the viewers watching live, the first crack at uh, helping us out on tour or coming to see those shows. They will sell out. So we're, we uh, hope that uh, the Melinda's will book first. I'm excited. I'm excited. First excited crack for this one. was the IMG that, uh, that <laughs> yeah. Joe showed. The Half Moon crack. That was the <laughs> first crack. Yes. Uh, we got a lot of new uh, Patreon signups last week. We had a special two dollar special on DVDs. We're going to be doing that regularly, like maybe like once a month or, or every other month, for just a sale at the store, uh, just for the patrons. Uh, and on Friday, uh, we put up a special Patreon episode, five dollar and up. Uh, with Dan, Danny, the flub man, Opsel, who's, you know, our flub expert, uh, but he's from Iowa and he talks about Iowa shows. We, I, we show him some uh, Iowa shows like Sin of the City and um, what, what is that? The, the van man, the guy who does the van commercial and um, and you can oh, get yeah. his take, get his take on the on the Iowa video. So that's uh, f- uh, five dollar and up patrons uh, on uh, Patreon dot com slash found footage festival. Next week, we got the toe tapping tournament. It's March. It's March Madness time. So uh, oh, we haven't. Yeah, we haven't talked about this, but uh, we have to. Next week is going to be the the big day. We have a lot of new songs that we can play. Do you guys have anything cooking that you want to? I I know what I want, uh, and I'm not going to. I don't want to give it away. I don't. I either. emailed myself. I set up an email because I was so excited <laughs> about a song that someone played to send it at the end of uh, February. So I have my number one draft choice ready. Okay, Probably, so yeah. I, I don't know how like we'll do it. Will we do will we do like a draft beforehand, or will we? Uh, how, well, we'll have to discuss. Well, this. we'll have to figure this out. As usual, <laughs> we'll work it out live on the air as it's happening, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it won't make much sense to anyone. So, um, but yeah, be there to watch the chaos, and maybe we'll maybe we'll add call-ins just to add, add a new wrinkle. <laughs> oh, maybe we should have a call-in like do the votes on call-ins because normally, please we, no, you know. <laughs> We'll have Reese sing no. along live from Australia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this should be our most interactive uh, toe tapping tournament of all time. What if we well, take like okay. five well, calls and then whoever wins at the end of the fifth call <laughs> will appear at advances. the doorstep of different viewers and we'll all be reporting from different viewers' homes. Mm. Guys, Sally okay. just uh, chimed in in the uh, the chat that Clayton's asking when's the show going to end. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, right Nick now, is with, Clayton. Nick is with Clayton on this one. <laughs> <laughs> he always is. Uh, uh, right, right now, so, I hope look, you're shirtless in your boxers right now, having a bunny eat out of your ear, and uh, we're going <laughs> to say goodnight. So what are we going to get out on? Oh, it's uh, Dirty Country. Yeah, we're going to get out Yeah, 15th anniversary of Dirty Country, the documentary that Nick and I produced and directed and spent, I don't know, 28 years of our life on and, and um, two, two relationships. Yep. Uh, it's cost and, us a lot, but you know what else found footage festival came out of that. We, we, we ran did. out of money for dirty country. So then we we're like, Oh, let's, <laughs> let's uh, start the found footage festival. We started t- making money from that and putting it into the documentary and then found footage took off and here we are. Um, all right. So I'm going to show a music video that Larry Pierce. It's a song called she makes my Peter stand up. He wrote it for his wife. It's a very loving song. It's a very filthy song. 
And uh, it's one of my favorites. I think it's a very sweet song. So um, we're going to go out on that. And uh, if we had been prepared, we could have done better. We'll be right back. Got right after these, uh, right after these words. Please check out Seventh Day Adventure on Apple Music, YouTube, Spotify, or any other major platform. My nose isn't full of yuck anymore. Oh. You wanted more screaming? You got it. Say you come in the house and, and his face is bright red and he just laughed and I said, what's the matter? He goes, come here and listen to this. <laughs> Let me tell you all the story about a girl that makes me horny, it's true When I get this strange sensation, I can't stop this strong temptation to screw She makes my Peter stand up She makes my Peter stand up When she looks into my eyes and my pants, I feel the rise She makes my Peter stand up when she's wearing tight blue jeans and they're pulling at the seams, I go crazy. When she bends over for a glass and her shorts right up her ass, my eyes get hazy. And when she's lying in the sun and the sweat rolls off her buns, the way she smiles, the way she sits, the way she shakes her little tits, the way she wiggles when she walks, make me want to eat her box. Mm -hmm. She makes my Peter stand up. She makes my Peter stand up. When we return, Dr. Selmer will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all. That's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. That's it. That it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? In a. My nose is for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Cheerio, don't have a good day. Sizzler. Tinkerbell. We'll be right back right after that. Good luck from all of us at Hagen. And Kurt Polstead, the real great guy. Nice, nice. <laughs> Goodbye. Jim's coins in Hilda.